and we are recording. Uh, so welcome to the AI hacking workshop. Uh, today we will be going over how to attack like uh, machine learning models. Um, so let's just get started. The checking code is AI hacking. Yeah. Um, so what are we going to be talking about here? Uh, we're talking mostly about uh, adversarial attacks on machine learning models, which is essentially where we take a machine learning model, uh, which is one, which is a model that is going to be trying to like classify something. Uh, to like for example, it'll figure out what an image is, or it'll try to predict something, and we're trying to confuse that model into understanding the world wrong. We're trying to flip a couple of screws in its brain so that it doesn't understand what's happening. And one real world example of this is like this one shown right here. So we have the image recognized as a stop sign, which it clearly is to us, a human human eye. But if we add this adversarial perturbation um, or adversarial noise, as it's called, um, we can try to confuse a classifier into thinking that this is actually a yield sign. And if your car is thinking that this stop sign is actually a yield sign, uh, it could turn out very poorly for you. So there's a lot of in real life uh, examples of how this could be really dangerous. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's figure out how it actually works. Uh, so before we get started, um, actually, uh, it'd be nice if you guys could download this uh, Jupyter Pi book. Um, and if you get a chance, just go into it and uh, go to like the, here, I'll stream that for just a second. Uh, where is it? So if you go into this Jupyter Pi book, uh, click runtime and click uh, run all, uh, we probably need to run it all right now and we'll go over it later, uh, mostly because uh, as is with most machine learning stuff, um, it actually does take like a fair amount of time for the, the actual stuff to run. But anyways, uh, back to the presentation. Um, so download the Jupyter Pi book and try running it, uh, and we will talk about in more detail about the Jupyter Pi book as we go on. So a brief introduction to machine learning. Uh, machine learning is a new and fancy field under artificial intelligence, and it uses a lot of complex math to model real intelligence, most commonly in like classifying images or predicting outcomes. Uh, if you see a lot of like sports matches and stuff, there's a lot of different AIs that are used, uh, machine learning models that are used to um, figure out who's going to win a match, predict the outcome of a match, predict the outcome of like series. Um, a lot of this is like shown in like March Madness, for example, where uh, machine learning models are like pretty accurate. They've gone like, I've seen like up to like 80 to 90% accuracy on March Madness, which is usually like huge and upset filled. But there's a lot of different things machine learning can do, including like, uh, trying to make real sentences. If you've seen the GPT-3 uh, like machine learning stuff, uh, it uses uh, databases of human words and tries to formulate it into like real essays, uh, sentences, and like coherent thoughts. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of cool things in it. Uh, under machine learning, there's like this cool graphic. We have reinforcement learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning. And there's really a lot of stuff but all of it has different kinds of vulnerabilities in it uh, because everything in the world has vulnerabilities in it. So what math do we really need to know about? Um, the main one we need to know is how the model's trained. Uh, generally, we're gonna use this thing called gradient descent to optimize the learning of the model. Uh, and what gradient descent does is it's minimizing the cost function of the model, which in turn minimizes the errors that it's making. Um, Gradient descent itself is like this like multivariable calculus thing where we take like the derivative of all these variables and we try to estimate like the slope. So if we take the, the function, the cost function to be this three dimensional uh, thingy, uh, generally it's gonna be more than three dimensions, but this is just like one way of visualizing it. 
we're trying to estimate like the curves and see like what is actually occurring within the model to figure out how to maximize its accuracy. Uh, on the same time, in the same way, uh, when we attack it, we're also going to be using a sort of gradient descent, where instead of minimizing the cost function uh, to minimize the errors, we're trying to optimize um, maximizing the errors that the model are making in order to make it so that the model can misclassify stuff. So there's a lot of different kinds of attacks, but before we talk about the types of attacks, we need to kind of talk about the different kinds of models and uh, why, how they work. So oftentimes uh, we'll actually have white box models, like uh, commonly known ones like the GPT-3 or other uh, publicly available um, machine learning models will be white box, which means we know everything about them we know their algorithms, we know their methodology, and we know the data sets that are being used to train them. Uh, when we know the data sets being trained to use them or being used to train them, uh, we get a lot of insight into how the, the model works. We can figure out what the model thinks is important and what the model thinks is less important. And in essence, we just kind of have like a, a keen eye into what's going on. Whereas with a black box, with a lot of proprietary machine learning, uh, we don't know anything. We don't know their data sets. We don't, they're not publicly available data. We don't know um, like their, their uh, parameters for the machine learning algorithms, like their learning rates and stuff like that. We know nothing about the black box, but because it is a black box, we can still put things into it and get an output out of it. And using that, we can try and reverse engineer stuff. So. How does this stuff relate? Uh, different situations require different types of attacks. With no knowledge of the internals, there's less possible attacks, obviously. But there is always the, the possibility of figuring out how the internals work in a black box. And that's a whole different field. Uh, with full knowledge of the algorithms and training sets, we can exploit models in a lot more ways than we can without it. Um, black box attacks are much more common because they're much more realistic to find in the wild. If you have like a full white box like machine learning model, it's not really that important to really hack it because uh, it's generally not going to be used for something that, that'll be sensitive to that. Uh, on the other hand, if you have like a, a white a black box model, like one that's used in like a car or one that's used in like uh, something that is more sensitive to like privacy or security, uh, or safety, it'll be black boxed so that you won't actually be able to see inside of it. Um, and yeah, then that's generally what people try to attack. So uh, a couple different types of attacks. Uh, evasion is where we try and slowly change the data to make it more and more um, different while still looking uh, visually the same. Uh, and while we don't affect the model itself, this is a really uh, easy and relatively fast um, attack to do, making it one of the more common attacks on machine learning models. Um, when we say fast, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's like actually like snap your finger and it's done. Uh, it can take like up to like hours, uh, depending on what you're running it on. Uh, today, we're going to be running it on like uh, Google Collab Jupyter Notebooks, uh, which do have GPUs and actually do have pretty good specs. Um, but again, like if I was using a regular CPU, uh, it would probably take like 10 hours to run this attack. With this GPU that we're running it on, um, if you guys hopefully started running the thing already, uh, the entire notebook, the attack should only take like around 30 minutes to complete, 25 to 30 minutes, depending on how lucky you get. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're gonna be demoing an evasion attack here today uh, and it'll be really cool. Uh, there's a couple of different other types of attacks, uh, one most notably being poisoning. Uh, poisoning works completely differently. Rather than inserting data to be classified, we're inserting data into the training, uh, the training data. So instead of having it where uh, we are trying to get the model to classify us wrong, we're
Rahil, I think your audio is not working. Uh, hello, hello. There you go. Oh, is this good now? Yeah. Oh, uh, how you far go back, back? Like a slide or so. Uh, okay. So um, did we get over? Did we go through this so far? Yeah, towards the end of that, it cut out. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. I'll keep the chat open. Okay. Um, sorry about that. So, um, again, towards the end, we'll be demoing an evasion attack later today. Uh, so hopefully you guys have the Jupyter Pi book running and we don't have to like, you can see it all work in real time. Uh, okay. So then for the poisoning attack, uh, poisoning works very differently from evasion. Rather than inserting the data to be classified, we're inserting data into the training sets. Uh, and when the training sets, or when the model is training on these training sets, it'll understand, uh, it'll be mislabeled training data so that when we try and classify stuff later, it'll be misclassified uh, to actually be incorrect. Uh, this can be dangerous for a number of ways, but most importantly, and most notably, um, it can be seen in uh, like uh, one example I've read about is in GPT-3, the uh, natural language processing um, machine learning model. Uh, what the people could do is if they have training data where there's personally identifiable information um, that is shown to the public or that is mislabeled to be able to shown to the public uh, when people input data into the model and assume that it won't be uh, showed, like obviously construed uh, in a way that's not supposed to be used, uh, it will actually be used. Um, that's just one example. Uh, basically, when we mislabel stuff uh, intelligently, we can change the model's uh, understanding of what things are so that everything that is outputted is wrong or things that are outputted can be correct, but things that we want to be incorrectly classified will be wrong. And there's ways to do this. Uh, generally, they'll be like mathematically based. So there'll be a lot of math used in poisoning in order to cherry pick like the selected outcomes that they want to occur from the model. And then there's model extraction. Uh, this is generally only conducted against black box models. And it's, it's generally where we reverse engineer how the model is made and we can extract the, the training data from it. Or we can also extract other information in order to do other attacks like evasion. And we can make our evasion far more like uh, successful and easy to accomplish with model extraction. Um, again, we're gonna be using like uh, estimation functions to uh, try and put stuff in and take stuff out and see how uh, the model is actually understanding what's being put in. And generally if like confidence values and stuff are uh, present in like the, the output of this model, it helps a lot with understanding what the model is thinking and how to extract stuff out of it. All right. With that said, what does it look like? Uh, this is one example uh, that is in a academic paper from 2015. Uh, so you have a picture of a panda, which is 50 with some models, 57% confident it is. And if you add just a little bit of noise, the picture looks exactly the same, but the model thinks it's actually a gibbon. What this, what this, how this works is if we take minute pixel values and modify them slightly so that the picture looks exactly the same and the difference is only very, very few pixels that have changed drastically, the entire model will understand the picture completely differently. And that's how this panda looks like a given. So let's try it now. Um, there's a lot of tools that we are going to use for this. Um, you don't really have to install these, but if you're interested in machine learning, uh, these are a couple of the, the different libraries, uh, TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch. Uh, they have a lot of features that we can abstract all these deep mathematical theories so we can just focus on the important stuff. Um, instead of having to calculate the derivative of your function and then calculate the gradient and do gradient descent, there's like a K 
keras.backend.gradient function, which kind of saves a lot of work for a lot of people. Uh, same thing with like TensorFlow and PyTorch. They all have these complex calculus functions that just kind of save you a lot of time and a lot of like hard math work. All right. So, oops. So let's open the Jupyter Notebook. So uh, full disclosure, this wasn't made by me. Um, I've used this presentation before when I was learning about um, adversarial neural network attacks like three years ago in 2018. Uh, I was actually inspired to learn about this from a CTF challenge called Dog or Frog, where we had to trick a machine learning model into uh, thinking that a picture of a dog was actually a picture of a frog. Um, so, but, uh, yeah. Let's get started. Okay. So the goal of this notebook is to be taking a picture of a garbage truck and making the classifier think that it's actually a sports car. So um, well, let's just set it up really quickly. Um, so again, we're going to be using GPUs and Google Colab, which is a pretty cool thing that they have. Um, you can check in here if you click edit and uh, notebook settings that uh, make sure that you're using a GPU. Um, there's this thing called TPUs by Google where, which are like even faster and more like powerful, but I think you need to like pay to use them. You know, like a Google Colab Pro like membership or something like that. Uh, but GPU should work just fine for us. Um, so all this stuff is doing is just uh, installing like the GPU um, stuff so that the Python will run using the NVIDIA GPUs. Um, again, this is a little different. I had to modify a couple things because uh, Keras and stuff has changed since 2018. So had to do a little bit compatibility changing. Um, again, some more GPU stuff, but this is uh, uh, all the stuff that we need. Uh, so TensorFlow is actually, I think by default, installed through Keras. Uh, it's used by Keras to do a lot of things, uh, but because Keras is a lot better and more improved than it was before, uh, I have to actually do this uh, compatibility for TensorFlow. Uh, if I wanted to try a lot harder, there's uh, actually ways that I could have made this use uh, a more effective uh, processor uh, through TensorFlow, but for now, I think this should be fine. Uh, Sys and time are just going to be used uh, for us to understand like how long this stuff takes. NumPy is uh, very important and really useful for doing a lot of this data processing stuff. It allows us to see multi-dimensional arrays and stuff like that. And because we're working with pictures, uh, we'll probably be using uh, two-dimensional arrays to, to represent these pictures. Uh, we're going to be using Keras, uh, and these Keras applications are going to be the machine learning models that are pre-trained that already exist, and we're going to be using these to classify our images. Uh, so MobileNet, Exception, and Inception 3. Those are the three ones that we're going to be using here. Uh, and then PIL is like the, the default image library for Python, and matplotlib.pyplot is going to be how we display the images in the Jupyter Notebook. So downloading the training model modules models is right here. And then we have a couple of uh, utility functions. Now here's the important stuff. This is all the machine learning stuff is we're predicting. Uh, this is like the prediction function and the output function. This output is just saying we're X confident that uh, this is a blank. And then here is where we compare our predictions. So we're using the inception v3 model to predict it. Uh, and then we're using the exception and mobile net and it should all work in a second. So this is the picture that we have, a nice W waste management uh, trash truck. Yep. And then here we have, we have compare predictions, which calls this function earlier. Uh, so inception V3 is 88.49% sure it's a garbage truck. Exception is 93.83 and MobileNet is 99.98% sure. And generally, if you're like 99.98 is a super duper high amount of confidence, even 93% is really confident. Uh, so the question is, how do we make that 93% into 
very confused. Um, so uh, we're going to first use Inception V3 to fake the image. Uh, uh, we just load the image and what we're gonna do is we're uh, converting the RGB values to this one-to-one -one range and then we're slowly modifying them little by little. Okay, um, we're trying to change it into a sports car. Uh, you can check through here. This is just a JSON of, oopsies. Yeah, so this is just a JSON which has all the IDs of different kinds of classifications. Uh, each object has a number associated with it and that's just what we're gonna be using uh, to fake it. And then finally, we have like threshold and learning rate. So learning rate, uh, this is where we can like change uh, the, the values to be a little bit faster, a little bit slower. Um, and the threshold uh, is also going to be how we determine the, the maximum values. Uh, so learning rate is pretty much the most important part here. Um, we can increase the learning rate to make it so that it'll take a, a little steeper uh, path along the curve, or we could lower the learning rate so that it'll take longer to process the fake, uh, but it will be more accurate to do. And so here it's just really a push and pull of whether or not you have a lot of time to waste or whether or not you're trying to be really uh, like efficient and accurate with this stuff. Uh, why do we modify it little by little? Uh, so with every modification, we're trying to assess whether or not we're more or less effective because um, so we'll modify it a little bit and we'll see the confidence in the model of it being a garbage truck go down and down. But if this model, if this confidence stops going down, it we know that we're actually changing the wrong stuff and it's not helping. So we need to figure out like what is the most effective parts to change it the least while still making the model convinced that it's actually a sports car. Mm -hmm. And so we're copying the image uh, and we're pointing it to the first and the last layers of the neural network. So the neural network itself is going to be this like huge, uh, it's gonna be like a bunch of like nodes in the middle. We have layer one and we have the last layer. And in between these two layers, there's just gonna be a bunch of different variables that these models are using to say, uh, does it have this? Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? If so, then the classification is number like 858 garbage truck. If this isn't true, then we go down. Oh, it's not a garbage truck. What else could it be? Uh, but because we don't really have, uh, we don't really want to change everything. We just want to see uh, what's going in and what's going out. So we're only looking at the input and the output layers. So the cost function is calculating the prediction confidence of our fake image being the target class, meaning we're using the cost function now here to, to check whether or not it's confident we're a sports car. Um, yeah, and then we have a gradient function. Instead of having to do all this fancy like mathy stuff, we can literally call k, which is going to be the Keras backend um, function. Uh, k is just the regular, like often used um, alias, like np is used for NumPy. Uh, we're calling k.gradients on the cost function and the input layer. So we're entering from the input layer and we're slowly going, uh, uh, traveling across the gradient and trying to get to the output layer uh, with the desired output. And so here's the calculate cost functions. We just use, again, the Keras backend with a function, input layer, learning phase, and then cost function and gradient function. Uh, after we do this, uh, we just run it. So cost and gradients are going to be the output for our calculate cost and gradients function. And then our fake image is going to, we're going to say plus equals gradients times learning rate. This is where we're actually slowly changing our fake image to become what we want it to be. And of course, we make sure that we don't wanna change it too much. And that's what this is doing. If we change it too much and it becomes really a sports car, then we're not even hacking it anymore. We're just giving them a sports car. 
Uh, and so here we are. Uh, the fake prediction confidence right now is at 15% with 21 minutes in. Uh, from my experience running this uh, a couple times, just to make sure that it was consistent, it'll take about five to six more minutes to run. Uh, but I'll just talk over the rest of the Jupyter Notebook really quickly. Uh, so we want to revert it back to a 0 to 255 range, just so that when it's viewable, it will still exist in RGB. And then we're going to save it and compare the predictions. Um, so when we compare the predictions, you'll see uh, different models will see different things. We'll have uh, different, uh, we should have different confidence values for each model too. So whereas it was 83% previously, um, it may be like 82, 81, 60% confident that's a garbage truck now. Um, yeah. And again, you'll see it's identically visual, but different numerically. The mean pixel value will be changed. Uh, and that's really the important part uh, is we're gonna be changing pixel values. Uh, this is different than like thinking about it as if like the lighting's changed or something, because you may think like, oh, I mean, if I just change like the lighting, uh, the RGB values of every single pixel will be slightly brighter, right? But it doesn't exactly work like that because uh, we can kind of consider it to be, uh, if we change everything in a picture, it's essentially the same picture, just scale up or down, uh, multiplied by a scalar. If we change specific values to be different, then we're going to be changing like a lot of different parts of the picture. Uh, and in, in realistically, you can't understand exactly what is happening here. Uh, and that's what all the math is there for. Uh, neural networks are a really cool and interesting concept, but the issue is that we can't just know, we can't, we can't understand these neural networks in like a visualization or something really because of how many different variables and stuff that it actually uses to, uh, to work. Um, yeah, and so also we will show the percent changed at the end as well. Uh, so you can see in the last one and a half minutes, it's become 26%, whereas it took, it's the first like seven or so minutes it takes to get 1%. But after that, it starts to exponentially increase the prediction, the fake prediction confidence. Uh, so it should only take a minute or two more here. Uh, when it gets to around 85% confidence, then we are sure that it's actually a sports car and then uh, the rest of the notebook will run. Okay. So um, as I was saying before, uh, the challenge that actually got me into this was uh, a challenge but in Pico CTF 2018 called Dog or Frog. And it was a really interesting uh, way of understanding how this stuff works when I was uh, like still in high school, like a sophomore in high school. Um, Basically, what we were given in that problem, actually, I think I have a write-up of it from one of my old friends. Uh, alrighty. So this was the problem description. Uh, we're trying to get this. Uh, we're trying to get this dog to look like a frog. Uh, we want the con convolutional neural network to think that this dog is actually not a dog and rather it is a frog. Um, so you're given the model, you're given a template and uh, it's also inspired by a challenge from Google, which I think is still running where uh, they have their convolutional neural networks that are classifying images. And if you can break them, uh, you can, they'll pay you a lot of money or something. They do give you a lot of money. But so then here is the script they have. Uh, again, they used uh, Keras. I think, I don't know, I've heard Keras is less used nowadays. Uh, I'm not 
I was big into machine learning for that kind of stuff. Uh, but Hamming distance is uh, one thing that people use in a lot of crypto cryptography as well. Uh, in order to find like uh, hash collisions generally. Um, yeah. So they prepare the image, they have uh, some clever hands attacks and essentially they're doing the same thing where they create the image, they slowly modify it and in the end they get this tree frog. Uh, there's also tailed frogs, longhorn frogs, leaf beetles, African chameleons. You can convince the model that this dog is a lot of different things with just a little small changes, which is, I think, really cool. So uh, we're at 57% here. So should just shake a couple more seconds. Yeah. And I guess we'll just wait the remaining 30 seconds for this to happen. Alrighty, and we're just about done. Oh, oh, it's getting higher than eighty-five percent confidence. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Uh. Uh, you're supposed to stop there, but that's fine, I guess. Uh, don't know what's going on with that. Uh, usually it's supposed to run faster, but uh, essentially you can see the, the concept and you can run it by yourself on your own time. Uh, if you're really interested in this kind of stuff, I think you can modify your learning rates and see uh, how that could affect this stuff. Um, if you change your learning rate too much, then you'll get uh, a couple of different issues that start to occur. Uh, actually, and I think I have a Jupyter notebook here, which can show you that. Um, we go right here. So here, if you look at uh, when we're changing our learning rates. So we have learning rates of 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0.5. If you have a learning rate that's really small, like 0 0.01, uh, when we're going on this curve, it goes really slowly across the curve, but it's really accurate. If you have 0 0.05, we're traversing the curve at a reasonable rate here, but it's still like fairly accurate. If we have a really inaccurate, um, if we have a really high number right here, like 0 0.01, we totally miss the entire concavity of this uh, graph. And so even though this is just a one dimensional gradient descent, uh, when this is done with like five, six, seven, like 50, 100 variables, this like a uh, huge uh, like under misunderstanding of what's happening by the algorithm uh, will lead to the, the program just not working uh, where It'll have to change way too much for the pro for the picture to actually be misclassified, where it's not even what it initially was in the first place, uh, and that's why uh, that's like just one example of why learning rate is really important. But at the same time, again, with a learning rate as small as 0 0.01, we're still only at this, and you can see here where the the confidence going up and down that's when we're changing the wrong values. The wrong values are being modified. So 
different parts of the, the image is actually going to be changed, then what we actually want it to be. So let's go, it's like fluctuating between 27, 18, 30% now. Um, if we hit 85% confidence in the fake prediction, then we'll know like we're actually there. Okay, so here we go. 87% fake, fake prediction confidence. Uh, so we're saving the image and now we can compare the predictions again. So this should print out uh, with the fake image, uh, all the different comparisons. Yeah. Uh, if we're using TensorFlow 2.0, it'd be a little bit faster. Oh yeah, so you can see right here, Inception V3, 88.98% sure this is a sports car. Which is even more confident than it was that it was a garbage truck in the first place, which is questionable to say the least. So exception is still sure it's a garbage truck, 93.21, uh, which is even higher than, oh, where was it? Ah, which is just about the same as it was with the original image. And then finally, mobile net, 99.86% sure it's correct. So the fake image, the real image, you can see, you can't really see the difference uh, between these two, uh, but you can see the bean pixel value of the original image is 325,000, while the fake is 169.70. Uh, it looks like there's a lot less pixels. I think it's a little bit grainier here, and I think you can tell that um, just from looking at it a little bit. But the percent of pixels that change from the original to the fake is 100%. So actually 100% of these pixels are not the same pixels, but with just minute differences in how they, their, uh, the color is, the shape is, stuff like that. Uh, it's actually, it looks the same, but it's completely different. So I think that's all I had to say for today. Uh, so faked with Inception, 84% sure it's a sports car and exception was 91% sure that's a sports car, which is pretty good and pretty high. Uh, you can stack faking the image with more than one model, turning water into wine. Um, I think there's like some Kaggle, pro, uh, Kaggle data sets and stuff you can use to, to try this stuff out. I think it's a really cool and fun thing to do. Uh, and yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Is there any questions before we close up shop? All right, then I think I will stop the recording now.